Congratulations on your purchase of a Watchmaster IP Elite camera. I'm Allison with DRS. The Watchmaster IP Elite detects infrared heat and provides superior quality thermal imagery. This means you can confidently perform security and surveillance tasks in low light or no light conditions. Dark corner? No problem. Fog or bad weather? DRS has you covered. The Watchmaster IP Elite is designed to integrate seamlessly with your existing security infrastructure. Choose the method that works best for you. Plus, it's so efficient. The camera consumes less than 15 watts of power. Why is that so important? The Watchmaster IP Elite can be powered with the same Ethernet cable that streams the video and provides camera controls. If you'd like more information about the complete DRS line of thermal imagery solutions, go to www.drsinfrared.com. Keep watching because this video will walk you through the setup and assembly of your new camera. To do that, let's go to Rob. Hi, I'm Rob with DRS. I'm a Watchmaster IP Elite technician. Today, we're staging and assembling the Watchmaster IP Elite camera. In this video, you'll learn how to prepare and secure the Ethernet cable for IP66. You'll also learn the assembly of the camera with a focus on power over Ethernet, or PoE configuration, and a home run, or direct attached cabling installation. That just means there's a continuous length of cable from the PoE switch to the camera. The Watchmaster IP Elite was designed with an emphasis on ease of integration. Its mechanical design allows you to use a variety of industry standard brackets, from an axis bracket to a Pelco bracket. All right, let's get started. Be sure to follow all the safety instructions in your quick start guide. So I've just installed this axis bracket on the wall, but you could also install it on a ceiling or on a pole. Just make sure that the screws and plugs you're using are appropriate to the materials you're drilling into, like a brick wall. All right, it's time to assemble the camera now. Now normally, we'd take care of that at the installation site, but let's move inside to the lab so I can walk you through the process one step at a time. Before diving in, make sure you have the following tools on hand. A box cutter, a number two Phillips head screwdriver, vice grip pliers, a one inch opened end wrench or an adjustable wrench, an electric torque screwdriver set to 10 inch pounds with a T10 screwdriver bit, 90 millimeters in length a six inch scale or ruler, a hex wrench, an RJ45 crimping tool, and an RJ45 connector. To begin with, pull off the outside cover of the box. Use the box cutter to open the top of the box. Once you open the box, you'll find two important documents. A quick start guide and the end user license agreement. Read both documents carefully. Now let's take the rest of the items out of the box. The hardware kit. The camera body with the back cover attached. Now, if you open the back cover, you'll find the desiccant pack. Be sure to set this aside because you'll need it later. Now remove the base mount, the axis mount adapter, and the solar shroud. Let's open up the hardware kit. Inside, you'll find several small plastic bags which contain the cable gland with electrical nut, the O-ring, 16 number 6 screws, 14 screws are required, two of them are spares, two ceiling watchers with attached gaskets. and two stem bumpers. All the small bags are labeled for easy reference. Okay, let's get started. Take the number two Phillips head screwdriver and pierce the membrane of the cable gland.
Now remove the electrical nut and set it to the side. Place the O-ring on the cable gland. This is necessary to ensure a good seal. All right, the next step is to insert the Ethernet cable, the one back at the installation site. Start by inserting this through the axis mount adapter, the flat side. Then through the flat side of the base mount. Then the convex side or rounded side of the electrical nut. And finally, through the bottom and out the back of the camera body. If you're mounting to a standard Pelco bracket, then omit the axis mount adapter. OK, back to where we were. Insert the Ethernet cable through the threaded end of the cable gland. Pull the cable through the gland until there's about four and a quarter inches of cable past the gland. Use your ruler to measure the length. I want to mention, in this example, the camera will be powered by PoE. The camera can also be powered by 24 volt AC or 12 to 24 volt DC. If powering via AC or DC, those cables should also be routed through the gland at this time. Please refer to the quick start guide for details. Now, we tighten the cable gland onto the cable. Attach the vice grips to the flange. Then, Tighten the compression nut with the open end wrench until it's medium tight. About 15 inch pounds of torque should do it. Now it's time to crimp the RJ45 connector onto the cable. For the purposes of this example, we'll just show the last step. Once you're done, connect the RJ45 connector into the port on the back of the camera. Pull the Ethernet cable to set the cable gland into the camera. Next, position the electrical nut onto the cable gland and tighten it until it's finger tight. Next, use your hex wrench to tighten the electrical nut until it's fairly tight, about 8 inch pounds of torque. Next, attach the base plate to the camera body. Make sure to install the base plate in the proper orientation. It'll snap into place. The base plate is secured with 8 screws. Place the first screw into one of the holes and tighten it with the electric screwdriver. Now, repeat the procedure for the remaining seven screws. The axis mount adapter is next. Be sure to position the curved end of the adapter towards the back of the camera. The adapter requires four screws. Place one of them in the holes and tighten it with the electric screwdriver. Now repeat the procedure with the remaining three screws. The next step is to attach the sealing washers to two of the screws. You can see that one side of the washer is metal and the other side has the gasket material on it. Place the washer on the first screw with the metal side against the screw head.
Now, you should probably screw this into place using your electric screwdriver. This works better than forcing the washer down, and it creates less wear and tear on the gasket material. Now do the same thing with the second screw and washer. Okay, there we go. Now, find the desiccant pack that was in the back cover. You're gonna place it back in the back cover of the camera. Then, place the back cover on the camera body. You have to twist it into place so you don't pinch the large O-ring. There we go. Now, I line up the screw holes in the back cover with the two threaded holes in the camera body. I just sight down the holes and turn the back cover until you see the brass threads. Then drop the screws with the sealing washers into the holes and tighten them. The last step is to attach the solar shroud. The solar shroud provides shade from the sunlight and will reduce the solar loading. Insert the two stem bumpers into the shroud. Just press them into place. It's a loose fit. The solar shroud has two protrusions that snap into these two channels on the side of the camera. Put one into place and then snap the other side into place. That's it. Your camera is ready to be mounted. Let's go back outside for the final step. Now we're ready to mount the camera to the bracket outside. Have the four axis bracket screws ready. These are provided with the bracket. Now, position the assembled camera's four hole axis mount adapter onto the wall bracket and tighten the screws. All right, next, take a hex wrench and loosen the bracket adjustment screw on the bottom of the camera. Point it to the area of interest, tighten it back, and now you're ready to use your camera to record images and video. Here's something else you should know. This camera has a built-in heater that provides anti-icing and defogging for the camera lens. It almost requires no maintenance at all. Well, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. Visit us anytime at www.drsinfrared.com.